Ladies and gentlemen and non-binary buds, happy holidays one and all. It's that special time of year again. I hope your days are merry and bright, participating in your favorite winter festivities, snuggled around the ones we love as we bake, eat, drink, laugh, and reflect deep upon the year that transpired. And while I reflect upon the year I personally had, and don't worry, that video is coming. When it comes to this channel, I think about all the wonderful opportunities I was allowed with collaborating among my fellow wrestling video essayists, and the subject of today's video is a result of that well-built camaraderie as fellow community member Chris O'Brien organized a Secret Santa or Secret Santo project where I, Chris O'Brien, Joseph Montecilio, Cherry Chase, Nova, and Pro Wrestling Outsider all were randomly chosen a YouTuber to gift a match we like or what we think the individual we picked would like, and for this project, my match came from Nova. Getting a match recommendation from Nova is like getting a box of pro wrestling chocolates. You have no idea what you're going to get. Not even at the age of 20 as of recording of this video, and Nova has such a vast knowledge of the art form that dates so far back that you don't know if you're going to get a French catch match from the 1960s, a lost Antonio Inoki vs. Carl Gotch match from 1972, or some weird battle arts bullshit that goes 5 minutes and absolutely rules your world. The match I was gifted was Chris Hero vs. Ian Rotten from IWA Mid-South's Locked and Loaded Night 2 show from 2002 a match that Nova holds in very earnest sentiment, even assuring me that, given what I enjoy in wrestling, I would find worth in as well, and, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think this match is... beautiful? This stuff is crazy. You guys are gonna kill each other. Well, I mean, if, if one of us gets killed, then it's occupational hazards. IWA Mid-South is an independent promotion that formed in 1996. Originally based in Louisville, Kentucky, owned by hardcore pioneer Ian Rotten, shortly following his brief run in ECW in the mid-90s, the focus of the early years of the company was that of an ECW clone with plenty of hardcore weapon-filled death matches to satiate the lust for violence that was popular among the scene at the time. By 2000, after moving its base of operations to Charleston, Indiana, there would be a shift in how IWA Mid-South would book their shows by offering more technical-based matches that brought in what today would be considered some of the most beloved names of the 2000s independent scene, with the likes of CM Punk, Colt Cabana, Chris Hero, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and even Blink If You Miss It appearances by Cursed Maskless Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, all wrestling for the company. The latter of the two would bring probably the second most memorable match to ever come out of the promotion, being in a three-way with CM Punk for the company's heavyweight championship, the most memorable being the fuck you, I refuse to elaborate, one of the best matches of the 2000s, Samoa Joe vs. Necro Butcher Bloodbath. Suffice to say, the company has been successful at this balancing of hardcore and technical spectacle still operating to this day, their highest drawing events being the Ted Petty Invitational and King of the Deathmatch tournaments, the latter of which just makes me laugh at how insane some of these stipulations are if cagematch.net is to be believed, three-way glass galore deathmatch, losers bracket fans bring the weapons elimination match, and my personal favorite, quarterfinal barbed wire ropes, light tubes, and pool of rubbing alcohol match. Dudes rock. I, I don't know what to tell you. But for the purposes of the match we will be discussing, what happens when you take someone who's so used to one style of wrestling and completely take him out of his element against a determined and established top worker in theirs? Ian Rotten, I'll be completely honest and admit, I have no previous experience with. I respect his pioneering of the hardcore style in America, but it's not the kind of wrestling that translates well to getting someone into wrestling for the first time in the same way other styles do. But by the time of this match, he had held the company's top title for a record eight times and was a two-time winner of the aforementioned King of the Deathmatch tournament. Chris Hero, though, I am firmly familiar with. Probably most notable is Cassius Ono in NXT and NXT UK, 
famed member of the Kings of Wrestling with Claudio Castagnoli, an all-around legend of the independent scene, wrestling in literally every major indie promotion that sprouted out of the 2000s and 2010s. He is far from that in 2002, but he's made a name for himself here in Mid-South by winning their Ted Petty Invitational in 2000 and already having an IWA Mid-South heavyweight title reign in his resume. Pitting the two against each other not only offers a unique styles clash, but two individuals who are at different points in their career. Rotten is already made. He can be considered the ace of IWA Mid-South, the man in which the company revolves around and whose style paved the road for what it would eventually evolve into today. Hero, on the other hand, is still very young. Young. He's gotten opportunities, but he still has a lot to go, and a lot to prove to his peers if he wants to be the best wrestler in the company. And the best way to do it is to go against the man who created it all. Five minutes are gone, five minutes. The most obvious takeaway mere seconds into this match is just the sheer visuals on display in terms of what the wrestlers look like and the location they are competing in. If you've ever watched WWE programming and heard a top star denigrate someone because they came from the independents as low quality and broke, this is exactly what they're talking about. An echoey high school gym with maybe 30 something people, shout outs to the dude who just sits there all alone atop of the bleachers, probably paid a dollar to sit there, and both guys wrestling in t-shirts with the sleeves cut off and pants atop the grossest, most filthy mat you will ever ever see. Compared to most of the shows that IWA Mid-South would run at the time, this is at a much lower quality than what they would produce. But none of these qualities actually detract from this match. In fact, they give it a sense of charm that, had the match been in a better quality, simply wouldn't have. For starters, both Rotten and Hero get to be very vocal to themselves and the crowd, having witty banter between the two and vocalizing their frustration in trying to escape each other's submissions. Ian in particular is fantastic in this degree, grumbling shit and god damn it, as he's being outclassed by the more technically proficient Hero. I wouldn't call anything Rotten does in this section of the match, and by proxy the rest of the match as smooth or complex, more so rudimentary, like just shoving his hands into Hero's face to break a face lock. But it's believable because of the kind of wrestler Rotten is. Even if you're more willing to make someone bleed out than tap out, he knows the basics enough to keep someone grounded, reverse the simple holds, and find an opening to get someone into a pinning predicament. But Hero, being the more technically sound, is able to display a physical advantage, keeping Rotten in holds far longer than Rotten can. In a test of strength spot, a struggling Rotten just goes, fuck it, and bashes his head into heroes, but Hero relents and gives it back twofold. This is a great moment, punctuated by how well Hero sells how dangerous and desperate such a move was as he backs himself into the corner, letting the ref check to see if he's okay. This is all Rotten needs as a corner drop kick, followed by a pair of sickening headbutts, drop Hero back to the ground. But Hero can turn the violence up as well, as a surprise shoulder to the gut and a junkyard dog style headbutt put Hero back into the driver's seat as he pelts Rotten with kicks to the head. It's at this point I should note that while this isn't as violent or chaotic as Rotten's more hardcore matches, he does display a very keen understanding of focused violence and pain that make very small things feel excruciating. This is helped by the lack of sound from a commentary and larger crowd as his pained vocalization echoes from either being in Hero's Full Nelson, scrambling to find a way out, and the genuine howl he makes after getting kicked in the gut from Hero. Really helps put over Hero's offense as powerful. Sure, it might not be as flashy or crowd popping like a lariat or big boot, but it's simple, it's targeted, and most importantly, it hurts. And the crowd understands this as they go, oh, in unison. As the first act closes, Rotten's head is busted open as blood continues to trickle, and Chris Hero looks to capitalize. Ten minutes are gone. The second act of this match builds upon all the dynamics established in the first. As Rotten Stiff strikes pop the crowd, Hero does a good job selling them as he drops like a stone to a second European uppercut and immediately scuttles to the corner after getting a headbutt to the groin. Ian gives Hero what I can only assume as a lion tamer, but even if it's awkward looking, Hero puts it over as he really shows his vocal range while screaming in pain. And then Hero and Rotten have this really strange leg lock exchange, where each guy is trying to get a Boston Crab in. Okay, you're probably checked out at this point with how bad this looks, 
but I actually kind of like this spot, as even if it's in an awkward position, it creates a neat little story where both men are putting over how much something as basic as a Boston Crab can mean a world of difference in turning the match into their favor. The move put over more so when Hero was able to win the exchange, and in a pained sense of panic, Ian immediately goes for the ropes. A pinning attempt leads to a funny little moment where Rotten yells at the ref, I got a pin, goddammit! Showing the more charming side of the match, allowing a bit of levity with the crowd. A levity that is immediately shattered where in a dual ankle locked attempt, this happens. Now, go back and really listen to Hero scream here. This isn't the kind of sound that is normal. This is the kind of sound when you've really torn something, and Hero lets everyone know. This is my favorite part of the match, as it establishes three very important relationships that kick this match into another gear. Number one, Hero utilizes the empty space and echo of the gym around him to the fullest advantage, letting loose a genuinely blood-curdling scream in which, number two, puts over the move as something extremely painful and dangerous, which, number three, make Rotten himself dangerous as he was so desperate to escape the hold that he would try anything to get out and gain an advantage. And when all of these combine Voltron style, it reveals the greatest quality of this match, which is believability. A believability in wrestling that can be rare. I don't know what it's like to be put into a sharpshooter, or to take a 450 splash, or get into a four minute chop battle, but I do know what it's like to get my ankle twisted, and damn does it fucking suck. And Hero does an incredible job here selling the absolute agony of it by immediately leaving to the outside and struggles to gain a vertical base. Great bit in the match where Hero really endears himself to the crowd by fighting through his weakened ankle as he lays on the mat, kicking at Rotten, showing that he won't be taken advantage of easily, and even charming Rotten enough to be sympathetic as he allows Hero to recover. But as the second act ends, Rotten takes full advantage of Hero's injured limb as he gets him into an ankle lock, as Hero immediately scrambles to the ropes. It appears that the match has become dire for Chris Hero. <laughs> The third and final act of the match sees Hero desperately trying to keep Rotten in a headlock as both men just gruesomely rain down hammer fists that even the crowd has to chime in and wince at. As Rotten hammers his way out of it, Hero displays his own level of desperation as he hits what I think was a low blow and creates distance between him and Rotten by rolling out of the ring. Rotten follows, and at this point just takes the strategy of victory via total caving in of one's skull by repeatedly crashing his own head against heroes 12 whole ass times to the absolute shock and disgust of the 30-something attendees. Uh, I should probably point out that when Nova sent me this match, he described it as, and I quote, meth lab battle arts and... Boy, he wasn't kidding. This, obviously, busts open Hero's head as he struggles out of a Taz mission, reversing it into a variant of a Kimura lock. What's great about this segment is that it shows just how much the match is completely broken down into violence, as both men don't even care that submissions don't count outside the ring, they just want to hurt each other. Hero takes every moment he can to not just pay back the damage done to his ankle, but create as much distance between him and Rotten as possible to get his leg back into working shape, which really shows just how much damage it actually is in. An example of this damage is emphasized by Hero trying to tape it up with duct tape to make a faulty attempt at a bandage, but Rotten, smelling blood in the water, ferociously goes after the injured leg as Hero frantically does everything he can to escape. Hero once again puts on an excellent job selling this too, as his strikes against Rotten become more wild and his screams more vocal, putting over not just how much damage he's in, but genuine fear, exceptionally putting over how dangerous Rotten's intentions on the injured limb are. Hero's tenacity is displayed by countering Rotten into a leg grapevine, and Rotten desperately wailing on the injured limb of Hero, becoming the single solitary focus of his attack. As Hero is barely able to stand upon his own volition, and in the final moments of the match, Rotten's hubris gets the better of him, as one too many attempts on Hero's injured limb allows Hero to just allow his own weight to land on the back of Rotten's hamstring, causing him to cry out in pain, giving Hero an opening to end the match immediately by trapping Rotten's damage 
his leg into a standing figure four, and then the post-match is where things become uncomfortable. For a little more than a solid minute, the camera strictly focuses in on Rotten and his trainer, where in this moment, Rotten is vulnerable. It's shocking, and more so, it's sad. The man who just a minute ago was so vicious in desperation to win is now reduced to a maimed mess, begging for the pain to just go away. While I can't tell if this moment is a shoot or not, what I can tell is that this, much like the ankle twist earlier in the match and any moment in wrestling where a move goes horribly wrong, represents the harsh reality of how sudden violence in wrestling, no matter how basic or how many times it's been done, can be devastating and heartbreaking as how we as an audience know what it's like to feel pain on a very personal level and how the illusion of kayfabe drops and we just see the person, a person we want to desperately be okay. The camera is also able to keep the audience in the background and really pay attention to how they react. They're quiet, with their hands covering their mouths and looking away as his kneecap is popped back into place. The crowd then erupts into applause of empathy as even Hero comes in to make sure Rotten is okay, and in a moment of levity, Rotten makes light of the situation by exclaiming, The final moments being Hero embracing Rotten in respect and gratitude for not just giving him a great match, but that he's going to be okay. The real victory here stops being that Hero survived Rotten, but that Rotten himself is going to survive. He's going to wrestle another day as Rotten gets on the mic and simply goes... Hey, hey Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Hero versus Ian Rotten was an experience. An experience akin to watching Go Shiyazaki versus Kazuyuki Fujita from Noah in 2020. Obviously, both incredibly different matches for various reasons, but similar in what it does with our collective understanding of what we expect from a wrestling match. If you watch the WWE or New Japan or AEW, they have pageantry. It's loud. Their seats are packed with thousands of roaring fans, and the wrestlers are larger than life with their glorious marble sculpted bodies and egos. In wrestling discourse, so much is debated over whether people have the right look, if they need to put on weight, or lose weight, or change this, or do that, in order to appeal to what a greater idea of what wrestling should be. But this argument, to me, is something that's purely focused on a skin-deep aesthetic level. What Chris Hero vs. Ian Rotten asks is, if you take all of that away, if you take pro wrestling's lauded aesthetics away, is it still wrestling? What even is wrestling? I know... This is a highly pretentious takeaway from what is essentially two men headbutting each other's brain cells into powder, and from the outside looking in, both men aren't visually pleasing or clean. They don't have chiseled abs, tans, or boulder-sized biceps. It's not the best crowd or the most appealing location. The production is lacking where the cameramen will occasionally miss important moments in the match, and the commentary is basically unlistenable and can only be faintly heard from outside the ring, and if you have commentary, I don't know why it wasn't recorded over the match. And if you came away from this match being appalled at how Bush League the content was, I don't blame you. You have a right to disagree with how I feel about this match, but to me, what Hero and Rotten do here is take professional wrestling and boil it down to its most essential and valued qualities. Working with the absolute least, both men get the absolute most out of what wrestling is supposed to be. Because when Hero and Rotten take away everything that makes wrestling appealing on an audiovisual level, I believe. I'm allowed to believe. Professional wrestling is an art form most specifically about people. Yes, the spectacle and the moves and the fighting spirit is all exciting, but at the end of the day, it's about how we connect with their stories. And when we invest enough of ourselves in their story, it feels like we share their pain their sacrifices, their defeats, and in this match, despite how gruesome and uncompromising the content is in the violence, the screams, and the pain, we believe in how both competitors struggle. I believe it when Rotten verbalizes his frustration in escaping hero submissions that translate how proficient Hero's mat game is. 
I believe Hero, when he gets his ankle twisted, it really damages his vertical base and how much it must have hurt when he cried out in pain, essentially having to change his game plan, translating how desperate and dangerous Rotten is. I believe how violent Rotten can be, as he causes Hero to bleed with headbutts, and I believe that at the end of the day, both men are human. They hurt, they cry out in anguish, and they are capable of sympathy by the end, as even when both can barely stand following the brutality of the match, they choose to embrace each other in an act of respect, grateful at what each man has given, not just for the company, but also what each man has given to each other. And I think that's beautiful. And that is why I think Chris Hero versus Ian Rotten is beautiful. Thank you all for making it to the end of the video, and a big thank you to everyone who has supported me throughout 2022. I've been wanting to do this video essayist thing for years now, and the response to me and the channel has left me nothing but grateful. As this will be the last video I make for the year, I just wanted to shout out the community once again for letting me not just be a part of this series, but just letting me be able to share my views and thoughts on wrestling and art in general. 2023 is going to be a year where I branch out and try a lot of new things, collaborate more, and become undeniable. And I can't wait to share that all with you and let you all be on this ride with me. So once again, thank you Chris O'Brien, Joseph Monticilio, Cherry Chase, Nova, Pro Wrestling Outsider, and a much, much special shout outs to Reload Last Save and the lovely Puzzled Orca. Happy holidays and much love. See you sometimes.